When it comes to responsive options, very few page builders come close to the Visual Composer website builder. This is not WP Bakery. This is not the old Visual Composer. This is something totally new. It's called Visual Composer website builder and it's responsive options are just unparalleled. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. If you like this kind of video, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we're getting started right now. So this blog post example here to illustrate the responsive options, nice big header image, author information, the post itself, and then I have this four column widget down here to show you some more design options for responsive settings. And we'll notice at the top, the header image is a parallax image. It moves as we scroll and we can adjust the responsive options in two different places. One of them is using this icon right here. We can click on any of these and view the page on responsive mode, desktop, desktop or tablet and landscape, tablet and portrait, mobile in landscape and mobile in portrait. And if you have used any page builders before, you'll know the options they give you are desktop, tablet, and mobile, and that's it. So we have way more options for specifically designing pages and elements for different viewport sizes and different landscape or portrait modes. And you can click on any one of these and it adjusts to that size. You can see how it looks. And this looks rather large for mobile, for example. And you also don't want to have parallax on mobile because it doesn't work quite right and makes it load slower. So we can go in, click on design options. We choose our device type as custom, and then we click on mobile in portrait. And now anything we change here adjusts just for mobile in portrait. So I'm gonna turn the parallax off. Now I have parallax off for mobile in portrait. So we switch back to different viewport, different tablet, different uh, device design. We see we're still parallaxing in this one. We are parallaxing in this one. So that again, and if we go back to mobile in portrait, there is no parallax that's been turned off. So we can adjust pretty much any design option based on the viewport that we choose, which is pretty neat. Now, if we go and check out these columns down at the bottom, this is something that's very important because often you have multi-column setups that you can't adjust spacing for different devices very easily. Just going to change this back to desktop first. So we can see we have four columns here. And if we go to the row layout for the main row right here, row layout, we see our columns are 25, 25, 25, 25. So they're a quarter of the space each. And we can adjust these right here manu manually if we want to. We can choose a different layout, but it's clicking on one of these options here. And we can choose custom responsiveness settings. So if we click on that we can now adjust for each viewport type how much space each column takes up. So for example, if we wanted on the desktop to have the headline be 45%, and we wanted to fit the rest into there, we could change the first one to 45. And then these next ones, if we don't know exactly what size we need them to be, just erase what we have and then choose auto. And then auto for that one. And then auto for that one. So now it just, calculates what size is required to make it all fit. If we change this now to 15, it now adjusts the sizes for everybody to make it all fit across the entire space. So you don't need to think too much about the math. You pick the one that's most important. You adjust its size to how you want it, set the rest to auto, and then you can easily make it work how you want it to work. Now for mobile designs, quite often, you do have everything go to 100%. That's the custom standard way of doing things, but you don't have to do it that way. If you want to change it, let's choose mobile in landscape. We have these guys at 100%, but let's say we still want to have columns. We want to have the title at 100, but we still want to have these other guys be columns. So let's change, I'm not going to change this because that's the first one. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to change this to 45. Sorry, we're not in that one. Got to adjust the spacing or this percentage in the actual viewport that you're in. Let's shade out to 45. There's the, the headline. I'm going to keep that one at 100. And we're going to change this one to 33. And this one, 33. And then this one, 33. And now we have it fit the columns like we want them to. Or if you want to have the headline be part of the columns, let's just change the headline to 50. Change them all to 50, actually. Now we have two columns per row, and that's how easy it is to make these adjustments. So we're gonna change the padding as well if we wanted to change the padding or add more spacing on the side so it's not right up to the edge of the screen. You can do all these options here. 
And something that's also very important for mobile is reverse column stacking, because sometimes you will have a headline on the right side, and by default, that will go underneath when it goes to mobile. If we reverse the column stacking, then whatever's on the right side of the layout will go to the top. So to make this more clear, let's go to our desktop settings. I'm just gonna move this into the third column, sorry, the fourth column. So move the headline, move the description, and then move this third column text, fourth column text into the first one. So let's say the layout's like this, and you have the headline on the right-hand side for whatever reason, and the content is on the left. And that works in your design for desktop. But when you switch to mobile, then you have it so the headline, sorry, let's turn off reverse stacking. So now by default, you have it so the headline is at the bottom, and that doesn't make any sense because you have all this content first and the headlines at the bottom. That doesn't work. That's where reverse column stacking comes in. You switch that and now the headline's at the top. So it reverses the stacking direction. And it has to be done just right because as you see with these multiple column options, it will also reverse all the columns, not just the first one. So this works if you have a two column layout and you wanna have the title come first, which is not how it's set on your desktop. I hope that makes sense. If you haven't encountered this before in your website designs, you may not understand what I'm talking about, but if you have encountered this, you'll know how valuable that option is. So those are the responsive settings in Visual Composer Website Builder in a nutshell. The great part is you have way more viewports to work with and you can custom define column widths and layout designs for each viewport type, which is not done as easily in other page builders and it's definitely not available for so many different viewport types. So that's how the responsive options work in the new Visual Composer website builder. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And next up is watching this video up here, which shows you how to build a complete one page website with some cool effects using the new Visual Composer website builder. And this video down here is the one YouTube thinks you should watch. Until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.